This video will teach you how to make a vocabulary journal entry from the words you've selected from your independent reading. Vocabulary journal has several components. The first one is the number of the word. We're keeping an ordered list of all the words throughout the year. So audacity is word number one. In addition to the number and the word, you also need the part of speech here, the noun, and uh, you can abbreviate that. Next, you need the definition. Audacity has two different definitions. The first is the willingness to take bold risks, and the second is rude or disrespectful behavior or impudence. Now, those have quite different connotations. So I'm going to go to the sentence in which I found the word and see which one is the definition that I'm looking for. My sentence is, the candidate who has the audacity to change the emotional tone of this whole election will win the White House and have a shot at rebinding the civic fabric of this nation. That was from the New York Times. Looking at the use of the word audacity there, I see that Definition number one, the willingness to take bold risks, is uh, the correct definition. So I'm going to place a star next to that. I do, though, want to note the second definition because I may see the word in that, used in that context, and I want to be aware that it does have a separate meaning. Secondly, you need the related words. And when I say related, I mean related etymologically. So they may share roots or Greek or Latin roots. In this case, the word audacious is the adjective form of audacity, and audaciously is an adverb. Those words are formed from the same root, A-U-D-A-C, and then they have different derivational suffixes. Next, you can put a picture. This is optional. Many of you will choose to put pictures on a separate assignment we have called vocabulary boxes, but if you're a visual learner, it's great to have one in your vocabulary journal as well. And finally, you need some synonyms or antonyms. I chose to put synonyms here. Because my word has two different definitions, there's two different sets of synonyms. And I've put a star next to the first ones because, again, they're the ones related to my sentence. You could choose to do antonyms instead. If you have a noun which is very specific for which there aren't um, good synonyms, you could provide an example instead. And finally, you need the sentence where you found the word. You need a published sentence at least. If you, you should be writing down the sentence when you write down the word on your possible pages or at least the page where you found it so you could find it again. If you can't find that sentence, you can look up another published use of it on the internet. If you heard it in conversation, you can write down the approximation of the sentence um, in which you heard it. There will be another assignment where you make up your own sentences, but for here we're looking for published sentences because we know they're used correctly and um, just having a sense of where experienced users of the language are using them should help you learn where you could use them as well. This is one acceptable format for your vocabulary journal, but you don't have to put it in this format. If you'd rather have it look just like a list, um, a solid block of print, that's OK. Some students in the past have color-coded the different parts of the entry, or they've used highlighters, or um, they've made a chart that goes across the page. You can do any format you want as long as this material is all here. If your entry word is a verb, you should use the infinitive form of the verb. For example, if I read the sentence, he accosted me with excessive warmth. That was from the Cask of Amontillado. I know that the word accosted is a verb because it is the action that he is doing to me. If I'm not thinking about it and I just Google um, define accosted, the result will come back to me with just the infinitive form of accost. And then it will tell me that what I typed in was the past tense or the past participle of that verb. So I'm asking you to enter the infinitive form without any of the inflectional endings. In looking at that definition, I see that the word someone is in parentheses. So I want to talk a little bit more about how dictionaries work. 
In this Google dictionary, they are using the parentheses around someone to indicate that you need to have a pronoun or a name after the verb that is the object of the accosting. So you need to have that me in your sentence. He accosted me with excessive warmth. Other dictionaries show that an object is needed other ways. For example, Merriam-Webster tells you after the entry of a cost that it is a transitive verb. That means it needs an object. You need to indicate what or whom is being accosted. Um, they also include the to, which shows you that it's an infinitive. Technically, it's to accost means to approach. Uh, Google doesn't include that to, and I think it's helpful to just to help remind you that it is a verb, but it's not necessary. Also, if you do use an online dictionary, um, or if you Google the word, you will get many different definitions, and it's always important to sort of look across them and see if they all make sense one after another. Most of them have to do with approaching someone in an angry or an aggressive or a bold way. This one is also maybe an appropriate way too. But look at this one right here in the middle. Dictionary.com also has a definition of accosted with the ED, which means something completely different. Um, it's said of animals and it means represented as side by side. For example, two dolphins accosted. This is clearly not our definition, so I'm just going to ignore that. And um, I don't think that's common enough that I would add it as a second definition. Also, note that the little sound icon um, next to the pronunciation key for a cost. There is no real place in our program where you get a grade for knowing the word, the pronunciation of the word, but of course you'll want to know how to pronounce it correctly. You wouldn't want to go around saying something about being accosted because people would look at you like you don't know how to speak English. In addition, Google provides additional information about the word origin and this may help you in your related word entry. Last, I just want to make note about suffixes. We'll study suffixes in more detail this year. There's two different kinds of suffixes. Inflectional suffixes tell you something about the words um, grammatical behavior. For example, you add s or es to make plurals. Or sometimes you add s to verbs like I walk, he walks to show the person. You can add ed or ing to verbs. And um, it's always okay to, if you're using the word in a sentence, to add those suffixes. And it's also okay, like for example, if you found the word as an ing or an ed word, to then use the infinitive form of that. Usually you use the singular form of the word of your entry instead of the plural. There's a different kind of suffix called derivational suffix. These indicate the word's part of speech. And again, changing the word with these suffixes is what you're doing in the related word section of your journal. And so um, you might have a noun and a verb form and an adjective form of the same word. And it's important to be, know these words because sometimes the grammar of your sentence requires you to use a noun instead of an adjective. And it's good to know you can say he showed audacity or he was audacious, and you're conveying the same meaning. That's it for now.